Oh, good evening, everyone. Sego ani buju endio wachia kwe kwe. As the mayor of the city of Kingston, I offer these words in the spirit of this gathering. Let us bring our good minds and hearts together as one to honor and celebrate these traditional lands as a gathering place of the original peoples and their ancestors who are entrusted to care for Mother Earth since time immemorial. It is with deep humility that we acknowledge and offer our gratitude for their contributions to this community, having respect for all as we share this space now and walk side by side into the future. So with that as an official call to order, uh, Madam Deputy Clerk, do we have a quorum? Yes, Mayor Patterson, we have quorum. Thank you. So we were meeting in committee of the whole closed meeting. We did discuss two items. The first with respect to a, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land on Johnson Street. Uh, and secondly, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land from the Limestone District School Board. So I will ask for a motion to rise without reporting, please. Moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor Chinani, that Council rise from committee of the whole closed meeting without reporting. All those in favor? Opposed, and that's carried. Uh, next, we have the approval of the adits. We have uh, a couple of changes to existing delegations plus an additional delegation and some communications. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the adits, please? Moved by Councillor Chinani, seconded by Councillor Osterhoff. All those in favor? Opposed, and that's carried. Are there any disclosures of potential pecuniary interest? Councillor Stephen. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. I, Wendy Stephen, of the Council of the Corporation of the City of Kingston, declare my indirect pecuniary interest in the matter of Committee of the Whole, closed meeting item 1B, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, Limestone District School Board, as I am an employee of the Limestone District School Board. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any other disclosures? Okay, seeing none, then we will move to uh, presentations. Uh, we do have one presentation this evening. Uh, at this time, I will invite Mark Potter uh, to the podium who will present the Kingston and District Sports Hall of Fame inductees for 2022. Mr. Potter. Thank you and good evening, Your Worship, members of council. It's my great honor to be here tonight to introduce to you six new members of the Kingston District Sports Hall of Fame for the year 2023. The members of our board of directors would like to thank our selection committee for their tremendous work in selecting the new members. We should all be appreciative for a city of our size to produce so many world-class athletes here in Kingston. Equally important are the builders, the coaches, the volunteers who nurture these athletes and help them move on to greatness. Last fall, the Hall of Fame celebrated 25 years. I would like to take a moment to pay tribute to a longtime member of City Council who represented Kings Court for approximately 20 years, Joe Hawkins. Joe was a driving force behind setting up this Hall of Fame in the mid-1990s. Tonight, our new inductees have the same spirit as Joe and dedication to achieve the highest honor in Kingston sports. Their names are gonna be read alphabetically. We'll ask each new inductee to stand as we read their biography. Start with Ted Batchelor, builder, basketball. A native of Belleville, Ted excelled in both basketball and softball. At the University of Western Ontario, he was the MVP on the varsity basketball team in 1958-59. He came to Kingston, enrolled at St. Lawrence College, he was named team captain and most valuable player all three years he played at St. Lawrence, two of which his team was undefeated and won the Eastern Division Championship. He graduated as the all-time leading scorer over a three-year Ontario college career, and despite his player resume, he's still best known and renowned as an outstanding coach. He taught in the school's business administration program and in 1971, he took over as the school's varsity basketball coach. He held that position for 17 years and became known as a man who could engender respect of his players, officials, and fellow coaches. During his time at St. Lawrence, his team won an astounding 200 games and lost just 67. They won four Tier 2 championships and a silver medal at the Tier 1 level. 
Ted was named Coach of the Year in both Tier 1 and Tier 2. He was also the only Tier 2 coach to successfully challenge a Tier 1 school for a spot in the top division's playoff format, which he did on two occasions. After winning two provincial senior championships with Kingston teams as a player, he won two more as a coach. In all, he won five awards from the province of Ontario for coaching and is a member of the St. Lawrence College Hall of Fame. Ted Batchelor. <laughs> Kevin Dickey, builder, golf, represented tonight by his dad, Ron Dickey. Kevin was a superb golfer in his own right. He earned a U.S. college scholarship at South Carolina's Furman University, and he blazed a trail that he would subsequently help dozens of young players from the Kingston area also achieve. After his university days, Kevin played golf professionally on both the Canadian and the Australian tours before injuries cut short his career. He then turned to coaching, became a CPGA teaching pro at Amherstview, Garrison, and Cataraqui. He was renowned for his ability to impart a love of the game to his students and help them understand what it took to be successful in the golf world. As a coach, he mentored many young local golfers, men and women, who went on to compete and succeed at the highest level of the sport. And all 19 local players earned scholarships at U.S. schools, among them Canadian Tour winner and PGA Tour champion Matt McQuillan, Ontario Junior Champion, and two-time NCAA Individual Champion Brad Ravel, NCAA Champion Patty Hogaboom, and Ontario Amateur Champions Augusta James and Kristen McLaren. Kevin's protégés also went on to win dozens of club championships throughout the Kingston region. Sadly, Kevin passed away in 2019 at the age of 57. Sarah Dupre Healy, athlete, distance runner. Sarah was a multi-sport athlete at Regiopolis, Notre Dame. She had her greatest impact on the track and cross-country course. She qualified for the Ontario High School Championships in both disciplines in each of her five high school years. A Canadian gold medalist in the 10,000 meters at the Ontario Summer Games in 1994, Sarah was the first woman to receive a cross-country scholarship at Providence College. She helped Providence win the NCAA Division I Championship in 1995 and was a four-time All-American. In 1999, Sarah was Providence's Female Athlete of the Year. In the same year, she was named an Academic All-American. Named to Canada's national team, she competed in World Cross Country Championships for six consecutive years between 1998 and 2003. Along the way, she won medals at the Canadian Cross Country Championships three times, including gold in 2001 and silver in 2000. She won gold at the Canadian 10K Road Running Championships in 2002. She was fifth running for Canada in the 5,000 meters at the Francophone Games in 2001. Sarah's leadership was demonstrated by being named team captain in her senior year at Providence. She was also captain for three years on Canada's national team, Sarah Dupre. <laughs> Doug Jeffries, builder, sports broadcasting. Born in Gananoque, Doug attended Loyalist College, embarking on a 46-year broadcasting career, the longest tenure of any Kingston broadcaster in sports. About half that time, he split between CKLC Radio, starting in 1976 when the Summer Olympics began here in Kingston. Later in the late 90s, he moved on to CKWS-TV, where for more than 20 years, he was a local sports director and anchor on television until his retirement in June of last year. During his time as a sportscaster, Doug also served the community working for organizations such as the Kingston Voyagers Hockey Club, Queen's University Athletics, the Knights of Columbus Basketball League, which became the Pete Peterson Basketball League. He also served as the longtime public address announcer for the Queen's Golden Gales football team, the Kingston Canadians, and the Junior B Voyagers Hockey Club. 
In addition to reporting on the highest levels of high school, college, and university sports, he also made time for virtually every amateur and youth sport that's played here, both competitively and recreationally. He was a familiar face as a master of ceremonies at athletic awards events, was always quick to offer his support to many charitable organizations, and among Doug's many accolades are a special merit award from Queen's University, service awards from the Church Athletic League, and the local chapter of the Special Olympics, Doug Jeffries. Jay McKee, athlete, hockey. A graduate of Amherst Fuse, Ernesttown Minor Hockey Association, and the Ernesttown Junior C Jets, Jay was a first round selection in both the NHL draft and the Ontario Hockey League draft, taken by Sudbury in the OHL and the Buffalo Sabres in the NHL. Played 14 NHL seasons, over 800 games, primarily with Buffalo, and was renowned as a shot blocker and a strong defensive player. He was an assistant captain with the Sabres. He helped the team reach the Eastern Conference Final on three occasions and played in one Stanley Cup Final. He was Buffalo's nominee for the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy, which is given to players who exemplify perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. He also played in the NHL for St. Louis and Pittsburgh. During his playing years, he gave back to many charities, hosting charity golf tournaments that supported the Child Life Program at Kingston General Hospital, juvenile diabetes research, and an orphanage in Belarus. After his playing career ended, he turned to coaching. In 2014, he was a player coach with a team in Dundas, Ontario, a senior team that went on to win the Allen Cup Championship. From there, he became the head coach of the Kitchener Rangers in the Ontario Hockey League. 2021, he moved on to Hamilton to coach the Bulldogs, and last year, he took the Bulldogs to the Memorial Cup. Jay McKee, welcome to the Kingston District Sports Hall of Fame. Bill Taher, athlete, hockey, represented by his son tonight, Art Taher. A student at Regiopolis College, he left school to join the family's blacksmith business. Bill's ability as a goaltender became evident with a strong Regi team, and it led him to a spot on the Kingston Junior Combines, who in 1926 won the Ontario Championship, and to date became the first and only local Kingston team to play in the Memorial Cup Final. Bill turned pro the next season with Hamilton of the Canadian Professional League, and he stayed with the team until it moved to Buffalo to become the Bisons, and he joined the International League the following season. He helped the Bisons win championships in 1932 and 1933. He remained in the league with both Cleveland and Rochester. He led the International League in wins on four separate occasions. In over seven seasons, he had a goals against average of just 1.66. Widely considered to be an NHL caliber player, he made just one appearance in the NHL. While still playing junior here in Kingston in 1926, he was called up to play one game in an emergency situation with the Montreal Canadiens. Bill retired from pro hockey in 1936 at the age of 29. He suffered many serious injuries during his hockey career, the effects of which likely contributed to his early death in 1943 at the age of 35. Bill Taher. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you tonight for your attention, and we want to welcome six new members to the Kingston District Sports Hall of Fame. We're looking forward to the official induction ceremonies, which will be held at Kingston's Quality Inn on Friday, May the 5th, 2023. And we'd ask now that the inductees gather with us in Memorial Hall. And thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll uh, continue on in our agenda. We have no further presentations, but we do have several delegations this evening. Uh, first, I will invite Mary Jo Courtier, Executive Director of the Downtown Kingston BIA, uh, to speak to Council with respect to Clause 1, Report Number 15, received from the CAO with respect to the 2024 Memorial Cup. It's great, welcome. And just a note to all our delegations that as usual you have five minutes and then I will open up the floor to questions from members of council. Okay, hello your worship, council and staff. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to speak to you this evening. My name is Mary Jo Curie. I'm the executive director of Downtown Kingston BIA and I'm here representing over 700 businesses in the downtown core. I'll highlight three reasons why support of the Memorial Cup is critical to the success of Downtown Kingston and then introduce you to one of our business owners. Downtown Kingston, we got slides? Oh, sorry, next slide please. Downtown Kingston has a history of producing and hosting many su successful events such as the Limestone City Blues Festival, Busker's Rendezvous, Febfest, The Briar, Scotty's Tur Curling Tournament, Skate Canada, and the Tragically Hip Final Concert. There are, there's a healthy business mix in downtown Kingston, boasting over 150 restaurants, cafes, and bars, over 100 retail stores, 60 health and beauty establishments, and five major hotel chains. The perfect mi mix for an event that could draw as many as 55,000 spectators. There's a vibrant nightlife in downtown Kingston and the Leon Center is in the middle of the action. Next slide, please. Long COVID means something different for small business. For many of you, the financial effects of COVID-19 may be a distant memory, but for recovery, but recovery for small business is still several years away. Do you know that Ontario restaurants were closed to diners for over 360 days since the start of the pandemic? one of the longest outdoor dining bands in the world. The Memorial Cup has the potential to pump over 20.4 million into the local and regional economy, much of which will be in downtown Kingston. This could be the difference between survival or closing for some of our businesses. Downtown Kingston employs over 10,000 Kingstonians, so the economic benefits will be widespread with additional shifts and gratuities. Next slide, please. In 2006, Downtown Kingston committed $3 million to the construction of the K-Rock, now Leon Centre. Back then, the vision was to put Downtown Kingston on the map to attract bigger bids, and the Memorial Cup is the biggest of them all. Now is your chance to position Kingston as a significant event venue. The Memorial Cup will give the City of Kingston and the region national exposure at a critical time after travel and tourism has been devastated and travelers are looking for options closer to home. I'd like to introduce Tim Pater, owner of four unique and successful restaurants in downtown Kingston. Next slide, please. To give you a snapshot of what Memorial Cup could do for businesses downtown, and I'm hoping that he is on Zoom. Madam Deputy Clerk, do we know if um, he's online? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I just don't see Mr. Pater in the meeting at this time. Okay, okay thank you. That's the end of my deadly Okay, communication. great, thank you very much. Uh, well, just before you leave, I'll just ask if there are any questions from members of council. Okay, uh, seeing none, okay, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll move to our second delegation. We'll invite Krista LeClaire, Executive Director of the Kingston Accommodation Partners, and Brian Hope, Chair of the Accommodations Committee for the Memorial Cup bid, and Regional Director of Sales at Diamond Hotels Management, Inc., to, again, speak to Clause 1, Report Number 15 from the CAO, with respect to the 2024 Memorial Cup. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mayor Patterson, for having us here, and members of Council, great to see you again. Um, so we are very excited to be here today to support uh, the 2024 Memorial Cup bid. Um, next slide, please. So I am the Executive Director for Kingston Accommodation Partners. I represent almost 50 um, accommodation properties throughout the city. Um, and also here today with me is Brian Hope. He is um, two, two roles today. So one is Chair of the Accommodation Committee for the Memorial Cup bid, and also as the Regional Director of Sales for Diamond Hotels Management. Next slide, please. 
Thank you. Um, so the Memorial Cup uh, has been competed for since 1919, and it's regarded as one of the pri uh, premier hockey championships and sporting events in the world. Um, the 2024 Memorial Cup presented by Kia will mark the 104th time this prestigious trophy has been competed for. Next slide, please. So there is actually a Kingston connection here. So the Memorial Cup began due to a Kingston military resident after World War I. Uh, the, and the Kingston Frontenacs are turning 50, which I know that we'll be touching on in a further delegation. So we've really been focused on this bid as an opportunity to bring the cup home to Kingston. Um, with that, I also wanted to touch on a couple points. So um, we often refer back to the 2020 um, Briar, which was a huge success uh, here in Kingston. And so as we go forward in talking about some of the economic impact that Brian will speak to about the Memorial Cup, I wanted to mention two things. One, that um, with the Briar, we actually hosted 8,900 visitors. And also we had it had an... Um, $11.4 million economic impact in the province. So those are two numbers that I kind of want you to keep in mind as Brian continues the delegation and talking about economic impact for this event. Thank you. The Memorial Cup is more than just hockey games. It's a 10-day it's a event extravaganza, if you will. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. Um, so there's the Memorial Cup opening ceremonies. There's the arrival of the Memorial Cup. There's the big fan fest that we're going to plan out, hopefully in the same area that we did like the Briar. Uh, the CHL uh, also has their own events where they do, uh, they do touch on, um, they would be looking at like a local community, um, a local aspect where we can show off one of our Kingston attractions, uh, you know, so we could have like a CHL event at Fort Henry or the Kingston Pen, or we could do like a ball hockey tournament on the Wabin Crossing. Uh, don't do that. Um, that uh, is not very good logistically, but it is a fun idea to think about. Uh, they also, the CHL also does have the Canadian Hockey League Awards. Next slide, please. These are the attendance numbers. Uh, so at the actual hockey game, so 2018 Regina had nearly 50,000 people uh, attend their games. We expect to be right in these areas, uh, if not higher, because Regina, the closest city to them is Saskatoon, which is about two and a half hours away. As you know, about two and a half hours away from us or less, Montreal, Toronto, Ottawa. So we anticipate a very high attendance at these games. Next slide, please. So these numbers are from 2019 uh, in Halifax. So uh, this is showing the uh, economic impact. Uh, you see uh, just under 19,000 visitors from, uh, went to go visit Halifax for the games. Uh, a very hockey number there, 99 local jobs supported by the event, and uh, just uh, $24 million for an overall economic activity. We expect to be uh, right around these numbers with everybody coming from these areas because Halifax, uh, I mean, there are cities that are close to them uh, are not as big as the ones that we have and we highly expect that uh, people want to come to our city. Next slide, please. This is a chart that has rectangles and circles and arrows showing the economic impact. So the event expenditures and, uh, and how it turns into economic impact. You can all look at this chart later, uh, but uh, we just wanted to post it up here just to show how everything works. All right, next slide, please. <laughs> Sorry, I, I looked at that slide for quite a bit. I was like, ooh. Um, so so this is, uh, these are the numbers from Halifax. So this shows like the, uh, the visitor spending, so $9.1 million uh, through Halifax. Accommodations, just under $4 million, uh, being the chair on the accommodations, uh, that's awesome. Um, and uh, all the others, and all other shopping, $482,000. Uh, I just think about all the people that are in downtown Kingston that are gonna go shopping in the area when they, when they come to our city. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay, perfect. Next slide, please. All right, and TSN, uh, it, they're going to be playing, those numbers on the side there where they're yellow, it's like 181, 119, those are in the thousands. So that's 181,000 people that are watching TSN, uh, about 300,000 total, uh, and that's just a 10-day advertisement for our city where we can showcase everything, like little segments and whatnot. So uh, I really think this is going to drive people to Kingston, not only for the games, but for the future. And next slide, please, and I know I'm done. 
Perfect. That's Thank you very perfect much for timing. support with staff. Report. Thank you. Are there any questions from Council? Councilor Osterhoff? Yeah, thank you for this exciting presentation, and it uh, sounds fantastic. Did, did I miss, uh, when When would the decision be made for who wins? Uh, solid question. Krista. Yeah, good question. I don't actually know the exact date. The next delegation might have that, but I think it's March. Yeah, so the bid goes in the end of January, and okay. then there should be a decision in March. All right. Okay. Keep up the great work. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, and through you. Um, in your experience with the, the two uh, massive curling tournaments that we held with the Briar and Scotties, where would you put this on a scale in relations to that event, which is by far our largest thus far? Yeah, thank you, and through you, Mayor Patterson. Um, this is bigger, so and, and that's why I wanted to highlight those visitor numbers and economic impact for the Briar. That was significant. This, the, these numbers for Halifax are showing almost or more than double. I think this is an outstanding opportunity for Kingston and super proud to be part of this. Okay, uh, Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Thank you for the low-key, calm, subdued presentation. I very much appreciate that. Uh, in, all, in, in all seriousness, a, a genuine question I have uh, is one of the main problems I think a lot of businesses are having is staffing. Uh, do you think at it's you know, two years away, if we or a year away, or if we were successful with this bid, do you think that you could staff up for the event to fully utilize the amount of tourism capacity that Kingston would have? Okay, I'll start, and Brian might want to jump in um, at, from an operations perspective, but through you, um, you know, there are lots of efforts happening um, at all levels of government right now in trying to solve what is deemed a labor crisis. Um, so that, you know, I can only say that, you know, from my kind of advocacy outlook, working with all of my partners across the province and, and the country, that that's just only going to increase and, and become, um, you know, something that is attainable. The really great thing about the timing of this event is that it is at the end of May. So that is when businesses are gearing up, they've been training and hiring. And so, you know, with all of our efforts, uh, we're hopeful. I'd just like to say, sorry, at the, at the end of May, that's all the university students are done for the year, so we're hoping to gather people from there as well. So uh, that's typically how our accommodations work for summer patios and whatnot. So uh, I'm confident that uh, we will have uh, the recruiting going and, uh, and continue on for there. Councilor Ridge. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Thank you very much for this presentation. I was especially excited by the slide with the circles and rectangles. It was very good. I appreciate that. In all seriousness, though, I think that this is a very excellent opportunity. I support this motion, and I think that uh, based off of my experience with the Briar and the economic stimulus that happened there, both for businesses and for the employees in terms of increased income and uh, concessions, I, I think that this is a very good opportunity. So thank you again for bringing, bringing this presentation to council. Okay, so thank you. Remember, just questions only at this point, yeah. Councillor Ridge, but thank you. Okay, uh, next is uh, Deputy Mayor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. I, I guess I had a quick question. We saw some of the numbers um, about kind of the immediate economic impact. Uh, was there any talk about um, kind of spin-off spin -off economics that sort of occurred year after year based on kind of the profiling of the city that wins this bid? Is there is there kind of a continuous sort of income after that maybe isn't as measurable as the immediate impact, which was quite substantial. I believe it was around $20 million. Uh, yes, through you. Um, so I think what's uh, what the graphs were showing, and you know, in all seriousness, yes, there's a lot of data dumped in there, and I think it's because we know that some like to dive into it later, so it's there for your for, for your reading later as well. Um, but yes, I think you know there is a lasting effect when we are pumping money into businesses and they are hiring people and they are you know doing upgrades on their businesses because they have this revenue coming in, which is fantastic. And then I don't want to steal the th thunder, but the next delegation will also speak to the legacy part, I think, of this event as well, um, which is another piece to consider. Thank you. So I guess would it be fair to say that, you know, there, there's a benefit to, to going after this, but there's also a significant cost of not going after it. Yeah, you're right. Um, and through you, the, the, um, 
you know, we see this all the time where you can invest small amounts of dollars into events, and I know what's on the table today um, you know, isn't small, but compared to the revenue that it drives in for the economy as a whole, it is small, right? We, we, this event can bring in so much more than that year after year after year and Perfect. leave a lasting legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shapes. Thank you. Um, unlike some of my previous councillors, uh, I actually uh, appreciated the second last slide with the numbers and letters. So, um, you, it was mentioned in your slides there were, in the last uh, Memorial Cup, 55,000 uh, attendants and 19,000 uh, from out of town. What's the expected out of town attendance to attend if we host it? The expected out of town attendance for, for this event? Correct. Uh, we're expecting similar to Halifax numbers just because uh, we are drawing from so many different areas. So people are going to Halifax uh, specific for uh, their, it's, uh, it's, Halifax is a little tough to get to, you do have to fly, um, or a long drive for a lot of us. We are in Ontario where there's, is it 19 million, I believe? Uh, or not 19 million. Um, I'll pull, up the, uh, I'll pull up the number there. But uh, we are surrounded uh, by people that can come to Kingston very easily within a two and a half hour drive. Uh, it's an excuse to come to Kingston. Uh, I've gone to uh, many trade shows where people are like, they see you and they're like, oh, I love Kingston. We're an excuse to come here. So I, I anticipate quite a few, uh, I would say close to Halifax numbers. And would those be overnight stays or just one like in and out? Yes, and through you. So there is actually uh, a number in there. So it, it shows that for Halifax, the average length of stay for guests that came to the Memorial Cup was seven nights, which is significant. So we're expecting that or more. So my main okay, question. Okay, sorry, uh, Councilor Shays, two questions. We're going to have to be the uh, procedural policeman here. So uh, next is Councilor Hassan. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, my question is related to, um, as, as a small business person, uh, it's a very excited uh, for me and I think um, many of my fellow small business owners. Um, looking at the city size, the numbers, and current situation uh, in our city uh, for the parking issues, have you uh, talked to city staff or the experts on that uh, manners and if they have any roadmap ready before we put the bid in to meet those challenges if a lot of people show up, which I, I mean, we are all excited, I'm excited too for that. Uh, and then I see that the location of the, our city is, is this really good when I'm expecting maybe more people will show up than we are expecting it? Or um, so I just want to know the other challenges beside the benefit. Do you have studied those uh, with the city staff or, or yourself? And what is the roadmap, if there's any? Yes, thank you for the question and through you. So like the Briar, we would work really closely with city staff on transit, so to encourage transit. So what we did with the Briar was um, we actually encouraged and worked with all of the hotels and, and city transit to encourage guests to take buses downtown as opposed to driving, and I think that it worked really well. So we actually allowed them to use the bus system for free while they were here, um, and there, there was tons of communication that went out to try to um, mitigate any congestion downtown. And I I think that it worked really well with the Briar, so we would follow a similar model. Also, uh, what kind of support and help you, as, as a committee of whole, that you were seeking from the community? Um, I mean, obviously, we are all here to support, but uh, from the other community or the small business community? Yes, and through you. So we are working, um, there's lots of people working on the bid, so outside of what you're discussing tonight from the city staff report, um, but the, the bid does have an executive committee as well as a working committee, um, and you know, in that also we've been um, working with community members to get letters of support, and we've recently got a letter of support from the Rotary Club of Kingston, um, which they came to the table for the briar and, and um, contributed a lot of the volunteers that worked in the tent and that sort of thing. So we are seeing tons of um, outpour of support throughout the city, um, all of those that want to come out and be a part of this event. Okay, uh, any other questions? Oh, Councillor Chinani, go ahead. 
Um, I'm going to ask uh, Paul's extra question. Um, <laughs> does Kingston have the hotel capacity um, to host uh, this event? Yes, and through you. So um, part of this um, bid that's being put together is really focusing on a southeastern Ontario approach. So like many other events that we have, um, you know, held, hosted and bid on, it's not simply Kingston. We're looking to our partners in Belleville and the county and Brockville and Gananoque. Um, a lot of those communities have sent in letters of support. We've also reached out to um, MPPs in the area um, that are also supporting this event. So there's a lot of collaboration to really make it a southeastern Ontario event and not solely Kingston. Um, Kingston will be busy and um, hustling um, for sure, but uh, you know we definitely expect that there'll be overflow into the region, which is really positive for the region. And as was mentioned on an earlier slide, there are events that um, happen with this event outside of the hockey, and they are focused on those event uh, those areas as well. So there is a lot of impact on the region as a whole. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you both very much. Uh, with that, we'll move to our third delegation. Uh, we will invite uh, Karen Cross, CEO of the Greater Kingston Chamber of Commerce, and Josh Hader, President of Spearhead Brewing Company, who will appear before Council to speak again to Clause 1 Report Number 15 from the CAO uh, with respect to the 2024 Memorial Cup. Uh, welcome, Ms. Cross, Mr. Hader. I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you and good evening. Uh, good evening, Mayor Patterson and Council. Thank you for this opportunity. I am accompanied today, as, as Mayor Patterson has mentioned, by, with Josh Hader of Spearhead Brewing Company. On behalf of our 650 members, encompassing over 18,000 employees of the Greater Kingston Chamber of Commerce, we are excited to be supporting our city and hosting the 2024 Memorial Cup. The overall results will benefit Kingston's economy and profile. Kingston as a community has the capacity, experience, and the drive for a successful experience. We would welcome not only the CHL teams competing for the Cup, but also fans and media from across the country. As for the business impact, you've just had great discussion around the business impacts uh, from a numbers perspective from um, both downtown Kingston and Kingston Accommodation Partners. So I'll pass, I'll move on from that and say it is important though to note that the whole city will recognize an economic uptick Team practices and events will occur at the Invisa Centre in the West, which also provides accommodation, retail and hospita hospitality opportunities accessible both by the 401 and the Highway 38 corridor with rapid access to the downtown area and easy ways for folks to take um, public transit to the Leon Centre. There are many similar facilities and businesses operating on the east side of our city as well, now even more reachable with the opening of the Waban Crossing. Um, in conclusion, the, the front necks hold a strong place in the hearts of Kingstonians and many comp and have, compl have complemented our rich hockey history. It is also important to recognize that we are a proud military city and welcome the opportunity to showcase Kingston and Kingston and Canada's proud military history with the Memorial Cup. So I want to thank you for your consideration and I'll pass the time over to Josh Hader of Spearhead Brewing to provide a business perspective on this event. Josh, over to you. Thanks, Karen, and uh, you know, thanks everybody for uh, giving us a few minutes here today. Uh, you know, one of the things uh, about Kingston is a lot of people forget about the West End and the East side of the city, where you know it's, everything focuses on the downtown. An event like this will be great for the downtown, but the West End and the East End, like we're going to benefit as well. Uh, first off, when the hotels downtown fill up, uh, people start moving out to the West and. Uh, with the practice facility there as well. Uh, we're gonna get a lot of economic benefit, uh, just all of our retails. We've got lots of great restaurants, the Rio Can Center's right there for shopping. So that's gonna drive a lot of traffic, a lot of people out there. It also gives uh, chances for businesses around the community to work together. I know that the, uh, the brewing community in Kingston has worked very hard to put ourselves on the map as a center for brewing excellence. We are uh, a group that works together, you know, we'll compete on the shelves, but when it comes down to being in person, we actually all work together to try to, uh, to, try to drive people into Kingston and get out, come out to see all of our, uh, our venues. We've done it many times and this will offer another opportunity to do that. Uh, the, and when I think back to the 2020 Briar, uh, you know, it was a great boost for all of us. 
but especially for those of us in the hospitality industry, uh, and that's you know downtown, West End, East End alike. Uh, you know, it was great for us during the briar, but what a lot of people forget is about 10 days later, the world got yanked out from under us. Uh, we had, uh, you know, that's when all the COVID lockdowns hit and we were really just starting to get that economic benefit because people were coming to Kingston from everywhere. Uh, so, you know, kind of to keep this short, you know, it will be really good for, uh, you know, certainly for our brewing industry, it'll be really good for uh, the West End businesses. Everybody I've talked to is really excited about the uh, the opportunity, and uh, hopefully, we can bring this bid home. Okay, thank you both uh, very much. Are there any questions from Council? Councilor Shapes. Uh, thank you. Um, I think you've already answered my question. It actually, would have been the, my fourth question for the previous delegation. Um, and being a West End counselor, I'm glad to hear that uh, it will not only be a, an event that will benefit the downtown core, but the city as a whole and the West End. Um, so could you confirm that is that will be the case? And maybe do you have any expectations on what kind of um, benefit will be for the West End? Josh, you want to take that question from your perspective from the Briar experience? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean I'm, I'm a little biased because we were a Briar sponsor, but um, the, all the other businesses around us, um, and I can tell you from the restaurant perspective, because we're a supplier for all those restaurants, they were very busy. There was a lot of people in town. There was a lot of people from Kingston who didn't necessarily buy tickets to the events, but they went out to the Boston Pizzas and the Kelsey's and everywhere around there to uh, get out and watch the games. Uh, it was, you know, a great place for people to gather, see the games on TV, have some food, have some beverages, and uh, just kind of enjoy the camaraderie and enjoy the sport. And, uh, you know, we can definitely see that happening again. And when we drive people out to those restaurants, there's so many retail shops, uh, you know, all in one area, plus the Cataract Way Mall. It gives us a lot of chance to, uh, a lot of us the chance to kind of rebuild our businesses, not only from the effects of COVID, which you know the businesses do have the long COVID effect, but also even like from our retail perspective, um, all the retailers that shut down on the biggest shopping day of the year, Christmas Eve this year, because of the snowstorm. So it, it uh, you know lots of things like that affect business, and uh, bringing people to Kingston helps uh, helps build that back. And if I could just add one more point to that, one of. Um the councillors did ask about the lasting effect of an event such as this, the legacy effects. I think one of the things I've, I've heard repeatedly from our members who are on the Gardner's Road strip near the Invista Centre, when there are lots of hockey tournaments happening there, people come in and have and dine and shop in, in those local areas, but what they're also seeing is they come back two months later, three months later, as they're driving past on the 401, because it's an easy access for them to get to. So I can see the same thing repeating itself with that corridor, the downtown corridor, and our, and our coming down 15 to that business group as well. So they, they'll want to come back to, to experience more of what they experienced during the Memorial Cup. Okay, thank you for that confirmation. Pleasure. Okay, uh, seeing no other questions, thank you both very much. Uh, and with that, we will move to our fourth delegation, which requires a motion of council to add. So moved by Councillor Shave, seconded by Councillor McLaren. That clauses 12.9 and 12.11 of our procedure by levy waived to allow Nicole Kemp, Assistant Vice President Business Operations, the Kingston Frontenacs, uh, and Megan Nott, Executive Director of Tourism Kingston, to appear before council to speak to uh, the same item with respect to the Memorial Cup. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed, and that's carried. So with that, I will invite uh, Ms. Kemp and Ms. Knott to the podium, and I will hand the floor over to you both. Thank you, Mayor Patterson and members of council. Thank you for um, welcoming us this evening. Um, this year, we have been celebrating our 50th anniversary as a hockey team and in the community. Um, over the years, we have strengthened our relationships with the community, local charities, our military, minor hockey, and other sports organizations. 
This year, we have started the season by hosting a home opener um, that included a street closure in front of the Leon Center, which we would again request as we move forward. Um, it was ex well, uh, well received, and we had probably 300 to 500 people that came pre-game to enjoy some food and beverage, live entertainment, uh, local entertainment, as well as some entertainment for children, including face painting. Um, we are, one of our front focuses this season has been on our team history and honoring those alumni that have played with us and contributed to our community. We would look to involve all of our alumni in our future event um, of the Memorial Cup bid and have already been in touch and have the support of um, our alumni. We have two alumni that will be sitting on our committee as well. Um, why now? This is the perfect time for Kingston to host it. We've been in the league for 50 years, and it's our turn to host the Memorial Cup. Um, on the ice, our team is in a great position to be competitive under the leadership of our general manager, Corey Cooper, and hosting the event would secure our team a spot in the, 22, 24, the 2024 Memorial Cup, which will be a great achievement for our team next season. He is already preparing that, as we've seen through the latest draft picks. Off the ice, our organization, our fans, and the city are re ready to host. We want to bring the excitement that the Briar brought to the city back again um, and amplify it. We are ready to continue the celebration into next season as we strive to host the Memorial Cup. Let's bring the cup back to Kingston. Sorry, not back to Kingston, to Kingston. <laughs> um, success with past events, you've heard it tonight. Um, the city has proven repeatedly that we have the ability to run larger national events successfully. The Tim Hortons Briar was a big event that brought the city together, has made an impact on the sporting world, and people still talk about that event. Other large sporting events hosted in Kingston include the Canadian National Tire Skating Championships, Scotty's Turning of Hearts, Skate Canada International, as well as many um, large hockey tournaments that we see on an annual basis. These types of events bring our community together to celebrate what our city can accomplish and what we can all work together to achieve. Um, so talking about um, one of our themes this year, the theme for the Memorial Cup, sorry, is all together now. So the pillars of our organization this year have changed. When it comes to creating equity, diversity, and inclusion in hockey is the work we do with our special events and programs. Staple events that will always be a part of our Kingston Frontenac season schedule include the team's Indigenous Peoples Night, which was extremely successful, Women in Sports Night, Pride Night, and Diversity in Hockey. These pillars event, pillar events are predominant principles in our community and demonstrate the importance of inclusion and respect in sport and in our, throughout our community. Thank you for your time and our, your support. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions from Council? Uh, Councilor Son. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, you just uh, said in your presentation that uh, you, um, the committee is focusing on diversity, inclusion, and equity. Mm -hmm. uh, may I ask you to highlight some of the area where you guys are focusing particularly to make sure that diversity, inclusion, and equ equity is in place? Of course. We are working closely with um, our military partners. We're working closely with um, Muhammad from the city of Kingston, who is our chair of our EDI committee. Um, so he will be overseeing um, what we're putting in place. Um, we're working with um, all of our partners that we just I just mentioned as well to ensure that the messaging in those events and through the um, auxiliary events is uh, well received and is correct. Um, so. Um, everything that we do will be um, seen through uh, Mohammed. And how, is, uh, how ready is our team is to compete in the, if we have the bid here? Our team will be ready. <laughs> we, uh, Corey Cooper has put in uh, a lot of uh, effort into preparing for next year. We have a great young team and they've been with us two years and next year will be even stronger. Uh, Councilor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, and through you. Um, you touched a little bit on this in, in, in regards to, to the GM and the trading of Shane Wright and Braden Hatch and Jackson Stewart and bringing all those draft picks in and some high-quality players. 
um, along with, I believe we have four or five that are now in the Central Scouting Bureau for in the higher rounds to be potential in the NHL. So do you believe that the Frontenacs, and I know the Frontenacs are a cyclical in their endeavors of playoff, not in playoff, and are we in the right cycle? <laughs> <laughs> we are in the right cycle. Yeah. Um, we, that was the rebuilding this year. Yeah. Um, those trades um, served a purpose for us, um, and that was to build our um, draft picks for this, this year's draft in June. You feel we're ready for next year? I feel like we are ready for next year. Awesome. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay, Ms. Kemp, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we have no further delegations this evening. Uh, we will move on. We have no briefings. Are there any petitions to present? Uh, we have no special uh, motions of congratulation or recognition. We have no deferred motions. So I will ask, uh, we'll move on to reports and I will ask for report uh, 15 from the CAO. Moved by Councillor Amos, seconded by Councillor Shaves, that report number 15 from the Chief Administrative Officer recommend be received and adopted clause by clause. Okay, the first clause is the 2024 Memorial Cup. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Uh, I think that the delegations have made a uh, excellent case for this, uh, and I know that my fellow council colleagues are too humble to say this, but I would like to just highlight the enthusiastic lobbying and advocacy that my fellow councillors, Councillor uh, uh, Councillor Chinani and Councillor Amos, have had with this uh, Memorial Cup. Uh, too often, much of the work behind council doors goes unrecognized. So I would just like to highlight the uh, the enthusiasm that they have shown for this. So. Uh, I support this uh, bid and go France. Thank you. Next is Councillor Amos. Thank you, Mayor Patterson, and through you. Um, just, a, just a quick note for, for Council. This is a huge opportunity, and, and like our delegations have said, this will be the largest sport tourism event that Kingston has ever hosted. Um, with TSN coverage nationally, uh, it'll expose Kingston for 10 days all across the country and the driving economic effect for all of our businesses, all of our accommodation partners uh, will, will not just be felt next year, but for many years to come. And this is j this, sorry, my enthusiasm is getting ahead of me. This, this is an outstanding uh, opportunity for Kingston to shine the way it can and uh, go France go. Thank you, Councillor Ostroff. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Patterson. I would just echo the words of my colleagues here, and uh, I think the part that I really am excited about as well is the opportunity for a broader economic impact uh, throughout eastern Ontario, really, and that is something to be celebrated. As they said, it's going to go uh, right, right from Brockville to um, Smith Falls to Belleville, so we should be uh, really um, seeing that uh, positive benefit. So I just want to, <clears throat> I know I'm positive that we'll have all hopefully unanimous support for that to send a message to the decision makers and I'm um, just looking forward to seeing it happen and um, being there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chin uh, Chinini. And um, I wanted to bring up another uh, positive that this will have is uh, local business, when they thrive, they're the ones who give back often, where if they succeed well and if they, if they have a good year, they give back, especially for like even in the sports community, you know, having, um, promoting more sports and having kids get to, that wouldn't necessarily be able to go into sports. And there's, there's a lot of giving back that way. So if, if we get this and then they thrive, then the community thrives as a whole. Because um, it trickles down and then it comes back out. So. Um, and I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in support of this, uh, 100%, and uh, I hope that we get it, so. Thank you. Uh, next is Councillor Glenn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Chinani said some of what I was going to say. Um, I'm in favor of this because I think our, our business community has uh, certainly struggled and had a difficult time. Uh, as a business owner, I know what that's like. And what we want as business owners is a hand up. 
And this is what we can do as a city council. We can open up an opportunity for our businesses to show just how good they are at what they do. So I'm totally in favor of this, and I agree with uh, Councillor Chinani, that businesses do give back when they have the opportunity. It allows them, though, to continue to employ people to in can, who can then continue to be contributing members of our society. So for all of those positive reasons, I'm in support of this. Um, I know that there are questions that are, are coming from um, members of the public because we have other very pressing priorities. And so in addressing that, um, what I'm going to say is that we have to look at the whole of Kingston. We have to make sure that we have people that are capable of helping others, and this is one of the ways to do that. Open up the door, help out some people who can then in turn pass that along. So I'm in support of it, and I'm looking forward to also enjoying a little bit of fun after uh, such a, a difficult period of time. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Ridge. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, now that it's the appropriate time to speak about my inclinations towards this motion, um, I want to echo Councillor Tozo's uh, sentiments with regards to the outreach that was done by uh, Councillor Amos and Councillor Chinani in particular uh, regarding this. And uh, while it may have sounded like I was making fun of the delegation with its rectangles and circles, it's actually, it's, it, if you look at the numbers in terms of it being an economic multiplier for uh, local businesses, it's actually quite, quite considerable and very impressive. And I mean, I think, I think for that reason alone, it should have consideration for what is uh, relatively the, the cost involved with this or put forward in the motion. So. I support this motion and I want to uh, thank you again for, thank everybody again. Thank you, Councillor Sinek. Thank you, Your Worship. I fully support this bid for the Memorial Cup. I remember in 2020 the excitement and the hustle and bustle that the Briar brought to the downtown. That was just so exciting. Um, every time TSN went to commercial break and we saw, you know, Market Square Confederation Basin and the webcam coming down on Market Square, it was so exciting. And I can't imagine like twice the number of visitors for the Memorial Cup compared to the Briar if we win this. So yeah, go Kingston, go. Definitely very exciting. I also really like the tie-in to the Frontenac's 50th season. You know, I, I never knew that until we just heard that tonight. And I think if we put that in the bid, that might give us a little bit of a competitive advantage. Um, I know too, looking at the financial contribution with um, Sault Ste. Marie and St. Catharines, that for our financial bid and also the in-kind, we're basically double what those um, two other cities are. Um, do we know what the criteria is for the, um, you know, for the decision makers? Like, will that go a long way that we have twice um, the financial contribution or um, any, anything? Like, what do they really look for when they try to make up their mind what city will be the host of the next Memorial Cup? Do we know? Ms. Turner. Through you, Mayor Patterson, and thanks, Councillor Osanek, for the question. My understanding is, is that they do look at that. Um, they also look at the history of the city, um, with it being the Memorial Cup. They'll look at the military piece. They look at facilities. They look at um, uh, just what can be offered to the fan base through the fan fest and all the different events. So it's part of the, the broader picture, but they will look at the financial contribution from the city. Yes. Great. Thank you. I hope we get this. Thank you. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Uh, Councillor Hassan. Your Worship, uh, Councillor Bowen was first. Well, that's true, but I did see your hand first. Oh, okay. So I'll let you go, and uh, well, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, I'll uh, come thank to you, Your Worship, uh, once again. Uh, I really like to uh, share my comments. Uh, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor um, Amos uh, Chinani and also uh, Councillor Tozo for talking to me and giving me the awareness of this special motion and uh, asking me to support. As a small business owner, again, it's a very excited for, for me after two years uh, um, unprecedented uh, event of the COVID, a lot of small businesses suffering and still suffering. I think this will be great help for all those small businesses here in Kingston um, and uh, surrounding uh, municipality. And 
this event is not only good economically, but also socially. It will be a great awareness and motivation for our young children and the youth who like to play, and they will have a lot of opportunity to meet with the players and, um, you know, the former players and, uh, you know, a lot of activities will be available and a whole community will be benefited uh, socially uh, after the two years, um, you know, uh, restrictions for the gatherings and stuff like that. Also, I'm, I wish that we can host and we can think to bring more events uh, such as uh, a Briar and uh, Memorial Cup in, in the future as well. Uh, and the question is to, to the staff, have we uh, thought or uh, contacted with the, um, the surrounding municipality, um, the, uh, the councils to ask, um, give us a letter of support or uh, help us to promote this uh, bid to uh, get, get through it. Ms. Turner. Through you, Mayor Patterson, um, yes, we do have letters of support coming in um, from, from other areas. I believe one of the delegations, um, Ms. LeClaire mentioned the fact that we are looking at this as more of an Eastern Ontario regional event, even though Kingston um, would be the host city. Um, so there is that economic spin-off and the benefit to our, to our neighboring communities as well. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Bohm. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you, um, it may come as a shock to the people in this room, but I have a real concern with this motion. I do. I have a concern about the opportunity costs that we will lose if we do not pass it unanimously. And the strength of a city passing something unanimously, unanimously will help this bid. There's definitely a cost to not supporting this, which we've heard. We've heard all the great things about it, but we have to factor in what we're gonna lose if we don't support it. Some other councillors have mentioned small businesses, which I've always been a huge supporter of. They're a driver, they're an economic driver. They're the ones that sponsor the names that go on the back of the local athletes' jerseys. They're the ones that provide funding for all the local teams, and most of them even volunteer as coaches. We had the Sports Hall of Fame inductees here tonight, most of them either local business owners or local athletes. Kingston is a sports tourism town. It is a town rich in history with sports. This is the right time for this bid. And I wasn't even planning on speaking to this tonight, but after pretty much everybody in the room went, I figured I'd have to do this. Small businesses support local athletes, we know that. And this is what drives the next Kirk Muller or Doug Gilmore or any number of great athletes that have come or passed through this city. I actually look at the attendance numbers and I get excited for Kingston because I saw one of the highest ones up there at around 79,000, I believe. And I think Kingston can become the new bar. I wouldn't be surprised if we had over 100,000 in attendance. We're between Toronto, Montreal and Ottawa. We're a quick drive. We're right on the 401 corridor. We are perfectly positioned to have probably the most successful Memorial Cup attendance ever, to be the bar in which all other Memorial Cups for the next 100 years are measured against when it comes to attendance. This is for the health of our entire city, and I asked that question numerous times, and so have others. This will pay dividends for years to come, so we can't look at it as, oh, it's, we're gonna host it you know, in, in this year. No, this will pay dividends, this will create sports tourism, the recurrent visits, the spin-off economics, when you look at the dollar amount that we're being asked to contribute, it is very, very small in the grand scheme of what this will bring back to the city. Having city council support on this is probably the difference between a successful bid and a non-successful bid. So I hope we all vote accordingly and that it's unanimous. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be. Thank you. Okay, anybody else wishes to speak? Councilor Shaves. I couldn't let Councillor Baum have the last word here. Um, oh, sorry, I've been corrected. Deputy Mayor Baum. Uh, I think everyone here knows I'm quite uh, supportive of uh, sports tourism and maybe even expanding it. <coughs> just hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Um, it's not just that in the, in the financial impact that we'll have, not just in the city downtown area, but the city as a whole. And being, as I mentioned earlier, a West End councillor and needing that support on the West End as well, 
highlight, this does highlight that and it's something that we do need and I do strongly support this initiative and will be supporting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll call the vote on clause one. All those in favor? Opposed? Let the record show that that passes unanimously. Very good, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to, uh, to clause two. Uh, bylaw amendments and updates to enact the Kingston Heritage Properties and Kingston Heritage Program Committee. Oh, well. So if we wanted to drive the point even a little bit more. Very good. Okay, thanks everybody. That was great. Okay, so clause two, a bylaw amendments and updates to enact the Kingston Heritage Properties and Kingston Heritage Program Committees. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Uh, clause three, rapid housing initiative round three, Kingston allocation. All those in favor? Opposed? I'm sorry, Councillor Shaves, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, just a question for a clarification to staff in regards to what we could use the spending for, because I was reading the document. Um, so under one of the criteria states, uh, the prospective residents of funded units must be homeless, at risk of homelessness, or in severe housing need. Uh, my question would be, can this be used for transitional housing? Uh, CEO Hurdle. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Mayor, the answer is absolutely. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other questions, we'll call the vote then on Clause 3. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Uh, clause 4, 2023 Municipal Borrowing Bylaw. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Okay, we have nothing from Committee of the Whole information reports. If you have any questions, just raise your hand as I read through them. Number one, 2022 Municipal Election Accessibility Plan. Councillor Rich. Thank you, Your Worship, and through you. Um, just looking at the report itself, just have to flip back to it, sorry. Um, I appreciate that there was an audit that was done with regards to um, accessibility issues for the voting locations. Uh, as we know, the voting turnout in the last election was less than optimal. Um, and I was curious as to, I don't remember seeing it in the report, uh, with regards to the Rideau Heights Community Center and the parking space being behind the building. Can staff provide possibly greater insight with regards to the, uh, the effects of the accessibility issues uh, there and potential issues around voting turnout? Uh, Mr. Clerk. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, the reality is that the way we ran the election uh, this year is you could vote anywhere. And uh, obviously not every location is ideal. Um, so the opportunity to vote online as well as attend many other locations uh, really negated uh, a significance with respect to the parking issue. Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk, for the answer. I appreciate that. Uh, Councillor Chinini. Um, I just want to know if uh, during the, um, the audit, or when you were looking at this, um, because I've, I've seen an unintended consequence to how things were done this time where seniors uh, didn't have accessibility to actually vote um, because there was voting places taken out. Um, like, at, oh, for example, there was Wright Crescent. It used to be at the library there where there's the Kingsman Senior Center. And a lot of them just couldn't go vote because it was at the Memorial Center. And, um, and I know that they added online uh, to vote, but I've had calls where I I, can't, I don't have a computer, I don't even know, so they had to find a way to get their son or something to come, and it, it just ended up being a really uh, big roadblock to seniors that I had found. Um, so I wonder if that was taken into account, and if that's going to be looked into the next time around where, uh, where there's like uh, senior housing, where there's accessibility issues, where there would need to be 
something, or even phone voting. I even had, oh, I can't vote on the phone anymore. Because um, I, I think that used to be something a while back, but I'm not entirely sure. Mr. Clerk? Uh, thank you for that question. Yes, we're, uh, we're cognizant of uh, all these minor issues that happen throughout the election. Uh, keep in mind that we did offer free transportation, free transit, uh, free Kingston access service uh, uh, to those who wanted to vote and wanted to have a specific access there. Um, one point that we're pretty much stressing uh, over and over is with respect to the internet voting, which trended very positively at this election. So we will take those accounts into account uh, as we uh, prepare for the upcoming election as well. Councillor Tozo. Thank you, Your Worship, through you. Uh, just a question I have is, I know you solicited feedback from the precinct captains. Was there an opportunity for people with accessibility issues to, to uh, give feedback to the precinct captains at the time, or was any um, feedback solicited from the general public who had accessibility needs at the time or after the fact? I know that this will probably come to the um, accessibility at, uh, committee as well, but I'm just curious, because that uh, I, I do appreciate that you did that. I was curious about that as well. Thank you for that question. Yes, we uh, sought out uh, information from everybody in terms of the individuals that were working, our captains, members of the public, and we did get a lot of feedback, and that feedback will be taken into consideration as we plan for the upcoming election. Okay, any other questions? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, number two, November 2022, contract award subject to delegation of authority. Uh, number three, quarterly report, Kingston Economic Development Corporation, Q4 2022. Okay, we have no information reports from members of council. Miscellaneous business, we have one motion, moved by Councillor Sanic, seconded by Councillor Stephen. The council waives section 3.1.4, subsection 4 of the first capital place illumination policy in order to illuminate City Hall and Springer Market Square in blue on January 31st, 2023, in memory of Jacques Del Azul Rivera. All those in favor? Opposed? And that carries. Okay, we have no new motions tonight. Are there any notices of motion? Seeing none, Madam Deputy Clerk, I'll ask for minutes, please. Moved by Councillor Hassan, seconded by Councillor Ridge, that the minutes of City Council meeting number 03, 2023, held Tuesday, January 10th, 2023, be confirmed. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Uh, we have a number of communications. Is there any other business? Uh, Madam Deputy Clerk, I'll ask for bylaws, please. Moved by Councillor Osanek, seconded by Councillor Stephen, that bylaws one through five be given their first and second reading. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Moved by Councillor Glenn, seconded by Councillor McLaren, that clause 12.63 of bylaw number 2021-41 be suspended for the purpose of giving bylaws one through four, three readings. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. And finally, moved by Councillor Tozo, seconded by Councillor Osterhoff, that bylaws one through five be given their third reading. All those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Motion to adjourn, please. Moved by Deputy Mayor Bohm, seconded by Councillor Tozo. All those in favor? Opposed? And we are adjourned. Thanks very much, everybody.